Hello, Major Colin here from uh, Salvationami in Tagunong. And I have a message for you as part of our, our worship for this week. And the message is entitled, No One Can Have Too Much of God in Their Life. And uh, my aim in sharing this message with you is that uh, we all might revisit, review and renew God's work in us. So one of my favourite verses in scripture is found in Psalm 27 where David voices his absolute delight in his communing with God. It's very real, very personal. Now I seek your understanding of this because David is not speaking about his prayer life although prayer is consistent with fervent faith. David is not speaking about praise, although praise is also consistent with a growing uh, relationship with God. And he's not sprouting about his character, he's not talking about his behaviour or, or his position in the world for that matter. None of these. David is speaking of the personal intimacy he experiences with God in relationship every day. It is as if he cannot get enough of God in his life. So here it is from the Passion Translation. Here's the one thing I crave from God, the one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house, finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I want to live my life so close to him that he takes pleasure in my every prayer. That's Psalm 27 verse 4. For David, it's, it's about just one thing. One thing. Intimately living in the company of the Creator God. Now we can sit and ponder that and find benefit from God. But we'll continue to examine our scripture and there is a, and we've already heard or you've read uh, from uh, 1 Peter, chapter 1, our reading. But David longed to be surrounded by God's presence, enclosed and encircled with holiness. That's personal holiness. Personal holiness is not a new thing. And down through the ages, God has made his closeness, his intimacy with him very real, very strong and very powerful, something to be depended upon, something to be guarded. As with David, it began when we say, with all my heart I desired this one thing, just one thing, intimately living in the company of the Creator God. Now the Apostle Peter says it this way, in uh, 1 Peter 1 verse 15, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. And prior to this verse, Peter is outlining, outlining what eternity is like. And then he says, but now you must be holy in everything you do. In this world. A number of people make the mistake of thinking that personal holiness is, is just the embodiment of good manners or behaviour. So they determine to excel in these areas. But holiness is not a matter of trying harder to be nice, to be selfless, to be kind, to be considered or accommodating all the idiots, you know. Holiness is not a product of a certain disposition. Holiness is a word for how well a person makes walking with God their goal in life. And that's not fulfilled by simply believing in God. Now the New Testament term for holiness is hagiosmos, which means set apart, as being set apart from certain influences and dedicated to God's use. It's twofold, set apart and dedicated for. Personal holiness, personal holiness is setting oneself apart. Christians choose to be a safe distance from activity that may degrade their hopes of holy living. And they choose to be committed to God and his purposes. 
Personal holiness is living and breathing, thinking and speaking, planning and acting in God's company. Everything in God's company. This one thing I would love, I would desire to be in God's company. Personal holiness is the result of inviting God's truth to influence our nature. Now, the key to personal holiness is to willingly surrender our human nature to God's influence. Now, God intended for you and for me to be holy, to be set apart, not skirting around the edges of faith, but delving deeply into God and enjoying the blessings that such a, a focus provides. Be made holy is a verb and a process, not a noun. It's not something that we have achieved but it's something that we work with God on. A person is made holy by the hand of God. For as long as that person presents themselves to God without reservation, for God to forgive, to heal, and to renew. Holiness is never fully accomplished in this world because holiness is the gradual work of God on the earthy heart of humankind. It's not like giving up chocolates and look to lose weight and, and improve our fitness. It's not that simple and not that superficial either. For as long as you live, if you make holiness that one thing you crave from God, the one thing you seek above all else, as David so passionately expressed in, in Psalm 27, and Peter affirms in his verses in chapter 1, then the fullest Holiness experience in this world is yours as a gift. A gift that grows from God. It comes to us through the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ and the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit who does God's refining work in people. Well, there it is. Personal holiness. We haven't men mentioned much about COVID-19 but in this climate in, under these conditions we must guard our relationship with God personal holiness is far more than simply reforming and, and controlling one's character holiness begins with a heart's desire for wholeness and a desperate prayer for God to live within and to work within even though holiness even though personal holiness is a work of gradual development don't let personal disappointments discourage you from valuing God's lessons along the way. And don't let those things discourage you from claiming the holiness which is yours today if you're committed to him. If you've been thinking that uh, tolerating the odd characters you live with or you work with is how to be holy, holy then you're mistaken. If you've been thinking that generosity or kindness makes you holy, then you're mistaken. If you really want to be holy, don't begin by looking at the traits of holiness and pursuing them. Rather, make your relationship with God that one big thing in your life, the most important thing. And every other portion of your life, every other trait and activity will be affected by God's hand and you don't have to worry about those things. My prayer today for you and for me is that we might crave God's company and presence more than any other single thing in life. Peter put it this way, now you must be holy in everything you do just as God who chose you is holy. Let's share a prayer together. Dear Father God, we come to you to declare our absolute desire and commitment to be your child. And to have you dwell within and have your presence radiated from there, outwardly through us, into the world. We pray that we be recognised as your children. We pray that we honour you in all that we do and all that we say. And we ask, Father, that this day we find a new and wonderful faith in you. Thank you for your son who died for our sins. 
Thank you for your spirit who works within us. Thank you, Father, for your wonderful creative powers. Amen.